All right, hello everybody, and welcome back to another new video on the channel today. We're talking about episode ninety-two for Boruto, and uh, I completely forgot that the episode came out yesterday. And uh, even though I'm not really a football fan, I went ahead and watched uh, the Super Bowl yesterday, anyways. And what do you know? I wasn't surprised who won, anyways. So, and I kind of apologize. I kind of apologize for not having an upload for the entirety of last week besides the Borto episode review last week, and that's because, well, like I said in my previous video, Kingdom March 3 was about to come out, and what do you know, it came out, and it took over my life. <laughs> it took over my life for a couple days, uh, more than a couple days, really, but um, I knew that, I knew by the end of yesterday, I was like, oh crap, I have to watch this episode, don't I? And um, even though Borto, uh, most of the time, kind of has, like, weird writing, like, weird writing decisions that they've made. Uh, I found the episode really enjoyable for what it was worth. Uh, there was a lot of moments where I was like, oh, that was nice, and then there was another moment where I was like, oh, that's that's cool, you know, there's a lot of, you know, character stuff kind of like I was expecting, and it, it kind of ends, like, how I expected as well, you know, because last week I mentioned how, like, Mitsuki's not going to go through anything severe, right? Because they even say in the episode, like, um, I forget who says that. I think it was Shikamaru. Shikamaru literally mentions like what he did, you know, ha caused something that could have been worse to not be as bad. Like it was still, it was still really bad, you know, because Anoki, uh, the Tsuchikage, you know, the second Tsuchikage or the third, yeah, the third Tsuchikage. I'm sorry, uh, the third Tsuchikage. You know, he he died, and you know, the episode obviously does confirm that you know he is dead. Uh, and, you know, there is a funeral at the beginning of the episode. And, yeah, it's it's kind of emotional, but I don't know. It kind of doesn't seem that emotional, to be honest. <laughs> because, um, I don't know. Like, to put it in comparison, uh, to put it in comparison, the, the third Okage's funeral back in Naruto Part 1 was way more emotional. And, you know, it was way more emotional for all the characters. Because, as you can see, as you're watching it, characters like... Uh, Kurosuchi and, you know, even Naruto, you know, they're, you know, pretty calm and collected and, you know, they kind of see it as it is and they're like, oh yeah, he's, he's gone and now, like, all of his philosophies and his will has been passed on to the next generation. Obviously, those of the village and, you know, the shinobi of the village are obviously very, you know, upset by this and even Seki, like, the guy who we didn't expect to really do much in the arc, to be honest, uh, is very emotional by it, but the Kage themselves are pretty, are just like, are kind of tame, you know, and like, you, you kind of see Bor not Boruto, Naruto, and he's like kind of smirking and smiling at times, so it's like, oh, that's really weird, <laughs> it's really weird, but, you know, this is, this is a different, you know, point of Naruto's life, you know, he's not, he, they, they kind of all seem like they were emotionally prepared for this, for this to happen, you know, because Onoki was like 92 years old, he was like 90-something years old, so they were kind of, already prepared that he was going to eventually pass on to the next life, especially because he was suffering through an illness. The series, you know, made it explicit that he, you know, was going to die at some point because of some illness that he had, or he was just going to die of old age. Um, you know, but obviously they are still affected by it, you know, because he was a Tsuchikage and he did contribute to the Hidden Stone Village for a very, very long time. For a very, very long time, he was the third Tsuchikage, and there was never another Tsuchikage until Kurosuchi decided to, you know, take his place. But, of course, you know, Borto and all the other, all the other Genin have to go back to the Leaf Village, and they didn't get a chance to stay. And I was like, yeah, I guess it makes sense, but I don't know, part of me kind of feels like maybe they should have stayed, but whatever. So they go back to the village, uh, or Borto and the others goes back to, go back to the village, and they give us a scene where... Uh, when Borto and Saurad have returned back home, obviously their families were very worried about them, you know, just leaving the village like the way they did. You know, they were very worried about him. So you see Borto walk into his home and his little sister in her kawaii-ness is just so much to take in. It's just, it was very emotional. <laughs> and then it was just as emotional with Saurad, you know, Sakura was she kind of mad at first right but obviously you know she's still a parent and she was still worried and you know she's just glad that her child Sarada is back home safe and sound of course and i don't know i just, I just really like these two scenes you know it's just 
It was nice, okay? It was, it was heartwarming. Don't, don't call me no bitch. Oh, <laughs> uh, what's wrong with me? So, um, the episode continues on, and like exactly like how we thought was going to happen, Mitsuki is obviously being... I was going to say interrogated, but he's more so just being questioned than anything. They were, they were asking him, like, oh, so you went there because you were investigating to see what they were going to do, right? But, and he, you know, Mitsuki answers, like, yeah, that was obviously what he was planning to do as he left the village. But he also went there for his own selfish reasons, and Mitsuki actually mentions, me, uh, mentions this to Boruto later on in the episode, sort of about when the episode's about to end. And, you know, that was to be expected. It was, it was to be expected that he was going to mention that to Borto, because Borto is obviously the one who wants to learn more about Mitsuki, you know, closely as a friend and an individual, you know, as a, as a team member. But everyone else was just curious as to why he went there, you know, other than selfish reasons. And, yeah, it was pretty much just to see what they were going to do and see if they were going to cause some kind of big catastrophe. And when do you know they were about to cause some catastrophe? And it could have been a lot worse. It could have been a lot worse than it was. And, yeah, it pretty much just as is what it is. Uh, then they give us a scene before that, actually. Before or after? Yeah, it was before. <laughs> and uh, Boruto and Sawada are, you know, stripped of their Genning uh, ranks. And so is Mitsuki. They're all stripped of their Genning ranks because, obviously, they all left on their own accords of the Lee Village. And, obviously, everyone else wasn't. You know, penalized for that because it, I guess it wasn't that big of a deal for them. But it was Mitsuki, Borto, and Sawada who, the ones, like, the big three who who were, like, punished the most and they were stood through the ranks. So it was to be expected, but kind of like how I already expected how it was going to end up anyways at the end of the episode. They're giving back their headbands, they're giving back their ranks, it's fine. You know, it's whatever. So if anyone really thought that they were going to go like a whole episode or whatever without their ranks being given back to them, it's whatever. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. And uh, <laughs> there's another point in the episode where Sarada and Borts are talking to each other, right? And they kind of start talking about Mitsuki and whether or not he's going to lead the village, whether or not they're actually going to, you know, see him ever again, you know, because... There are different sides of one's will, you know, so you don't really know what someone is really capable of. And that's very true of the real world, and it's the same very case of the world for Naruto. And Mitsuki's will is what caused him to leave the village in the first place. He, he went there because of investigative purpose reasons as a shinobi, but he also left because of various selfish reasons. And the episode explains, it, uh, explains that, you know, Mitsuki is going through, like, a certain phase in his and his life and his leniency of puberty. Uh, yeah, because Orochimaru makes an appearance in the episode, and he's saying, like, it was a rebellious phase, and like, it was sort of like puberty, and it's his transition phase from phase two to phase three, as it was mentioned before in the series prior. And, you know, this was a good part, and this is good development for Mitsuki, because this is making him more human, this is making him going through the phases, you know, a lot better. And it's good to experience moments like this, moments of loss, moments of, you know, the stuff that Mitsuki had to do throughout the entire period of this arc. And that's very good. And, yeah, it's whatever. You know, it's it's kind of like how it works how it works, and it's fine. Uh, Garaga, uh, he's no longer in a contract, a summoning contract with Borto anymore. They make, a, they make that a point in the episode. So, I don't know, it's kind of whatever. And... Yeah, the episode pretty much just ends with, you know, Team 7, uh, Mitsuki, Boruto, and Sarada getting their ranks back, getting their headbands back, and now they're going to go out and do missions with Konohamaru, and that's pretty much it. <laughs> like I said, overall, the episode uh, had a couple of points of writing where it wasn't that good, but overall, I still kind of enjoyed it because there was a lot of moments still, regardless, that I was like, yeah, that was really enjoyable. And the previews show that it's going to be, of course you know, filler, and that, that's to be expected, to be honest, because the arc that we were given was pretty long, and it was pretty big, especially with the loss of, you know, a Kage, a, a previous Kage that was established in the lore for Naruto Shippuden, so obviously we need to do a little bit of a break period, so that way they can, you know, start writing for the next arc, uh, whatever they're going to do, um, and I'm excited to see what they have to do next. The previous show, that it's just going to be like a, a filler arc for, you know, Naruto, Boruto and uh, Himawari to just kind of, 
interact with each other and just do whatever. They call it like a parent, like child day. And it's like a made up day that the Lee Village had created themselves. And it's self-explanatory. I don't need to explain it. But regardless, yeah, the episode was really good. Writing at times could have been a little bit more consistent as with the whole series itself, regardless. But that's a whole other topic for another day if people really want it, I guess. But it's whatever. The episode was enjoyable for me. Uh, I can understand why some certain people might not have liked this episode nearly as much, but it's whatever. Uh, I have my opinions. You have your own opinions. Uh, let me know in the comments what you thought of this episode. But anyways, that's the end of the episode, which means that's the end of the video. If you did enjoy, be sure to leave a like. If you are new, subscribe for more videos just like this. And hopefully I'll be able to have a review for Kingdom Hearts 3 out very, very soon. It's going to have spoilers. You know, for people who are interested, it's going to have spoilers because... Obviously, one of the biggest parts of Kingdom Hearts 3 was the story, was the end of the Xehanort saga. And actually, now that I think about it, I'm still kind of on defense. I was really on defense of whether or not I wanted to do a review or not, but whatever. If it comes out, it comes out. If it doesn't, whatever. Uh, I'll see you guys in the next video. Have a wonderful day. I'm out. Peace. <laughs>